Greetings and salutations, dear friends. My name is Yuri Makis, and today you join me on the first episode of our Dyson Sphere program Let's Play. The game where your ultimate goal is to harness the power of the sun and seek the answer to life, the universe, and everything. If you haven't seen it in action, you can always come and hang out on Twitch, where I will more than likely be playing it live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 6pm. With the shameless plug out of the way, let's get down to business. We've already selected to start a new game, and we're presented with a number of options to customize our starting cluster. We'll be using the numbers from one of my favorite songs, 6345789, which incidentally is the same seed we're using for our guides and tip videos. We're going to go with a normal amount of stars and resource multiplier. We can see that we have nine G-type stars in our cluster, and I recently learned, thanks to our friend Google, that G-type stars are also known as yellow dwarfs, and our sun is a G-type star. I also found that our sun does not officially have a name. Poor thing. Anyway, let's get started on Zybel. Welcome to the actual universe. You may find it's different from our homeland, should you be able to adapt to the laws of physics in a short time. I am your advisor and will help you through this mission. There is the glorious sun that we shall be sapping of all of its power. We'll be back for you, don't worry. Everything here is yours. As one of Cosmo and All a pioneer of the Dyson Sphere, mine. you will explore this cluster step by step. By using the resources here to construct the Dyson Sphere to provide energy for the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary resources for initial development. Now please drive the space capsule to the planet. I'm really looking forward to our Let's Play series. I was tempted to just go with the live show, but we're going to do some good things. Now you are about to reach the designated planet. But I wanted to go there. How dare you? So as instructed in our beginner's guide, I'll be utilizing the hydrogen's fuel cells that we'll be getting once we deconstruct our landing pod. Let's go ahead and put those in there. We don't use any energy when standing still. That's marvelous. So first things first, electromagnetism. Basic logistics, go. So we've had a quick look in map mode and decided that this is the right area to build our starter base. It is all the resources we need. Copper, iron, coal, and stone. Marvelous. Right next to each other. Perfect. So we're just gonna set up a quick and dirty mining operation using the items we get from unlocking electromagnetism and get our initial production lines up and running. We'll need a few more miners. And since we only get one wind turbine, we'll also need a few more of them. And a couple more power poles. Now we can go ahead and do a little more research. Of course, we temporarily disabled inventory researching, so let's re-enable that first. Now we can craft the various basic materials to unlock the first staple research branches alongside some automatic smelting. Let's get the basic ingot smelting along with a few magnets. To smelt basic materials such as iron ingots and copper ingots automatically. While you want to make the raw materials and products get in and out of it autonomously, 
you need to use sorters and conveyor belts. With that done, we'll want to prepare the area to automate every building that we have available to us. We want to get to a point where we aren't handcrafting anything. It's going to be a lot of work. Our mecha has burned through the hydrogen fuel rods, so now we need an alternative. How lucky we are that coal is so near to us. So we'll go ahead and manually mine just a little for now. Then we'll pop down a miner and fill a chest meanwhile. There we are. Perfect. You built a storage. Let's unlock some more research so we can get this automation off the ground. Matrix Lab's really important for the future, so that's next. Now we've got all these extra machines, we're going to need some more power. So wind turbines it is for now. With that done, we can go ahead and upgrade our production lines. Get some extra miners, a few more smelters. That way we can saturate the Mark 1 belts and begin automation of everything. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little. So now that we've completed the basic smeltery lines for copper, iron, and stone, we can look at creating a new set of production lines for the more advanced materials and components we'll need in order to automate the crafting of all the buildings. But first, more power! Indeed, a constant struggle in the early game does seem to be power generation. And we're going to want to move away from wind power as soon as we can. But for now, Let's find an open space to take over with turbines. This spot up here should do nicely.
Now we'll want to bring our smeltery lines to a focal point so that we can start using them. Something like this. And of course we've forgotten a most important resource. Magnets. So let's get that laid down. We'll want the miners first. Then we can merge both lines to saturate a single line. And get the smelters in. Bring the magnets out from each side and onto an output belt. Perfection. Now we have all the basic materials automated. That wraps up our first episode. Did you like our cut to the chase style or would you prefer a continuous yet silent playthrough? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, love your face.